Today we'll talk about data anomalies. But first I want to tell you something about our sponsor, DataCamp. DataCamp is an online learning platform with many interactive courses where you can build up your skills for understanding, analyzing and working with data. You don't need to bring any prior knowledge. And DataCamp is super easy to use. You don't need special software, you just sign up and do the courses on your browser. A great course to get you started, for example, is Data Science for Everyone, which doesn't require any coding skills. You can also learn the basics of artificial intelligence in their course Machine Learning for Everyone. And if you bring prior knowledge already, you can build up, for example, your Python or R skills, or learn how to work with SQL. Subscriptions for unlimited access start at $25 a month. You can check out the first chapter of any course for free if you use my link in the description below. Now let's talk about those data anomalies. I get asked a lot what I think about this or that report of an anomaly in particle physics, like the B meson anomaly at the Large Hadron Collider, which made headlines last month, or the muon G-2 that was just all over the news. But I thought, instead of just giving you my opinion, which you may or may not trust, I will instead give you some background to gauge the relevance of such headlines yourself. Why are there so many anomalies in particle physics? And how seriously should you take them? That's what we'll talk about today. The Higgs boson was discovered in 1984. I'm serious. The crystal ball experiment at Desi in Germany saw a particle that fit the expectation already in 1984. It made it into the New York Times with the headline Physicists Report Mystery Particle. But the supposed mystery particle turned out to be a data fluctuation. The Higgs boson was actually only discovered in 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And 1984 was quite a year, because also supersymmetry was observed and then disappeared again. How can this happen? Particle physicists calculate what they expect to see in an experiment using the best theory they have at the time. Currently, that's the standard model of particle physics. In 1984, that would have been the standard model minus the particles which hadn't been discovered. But the theory alone doesn't tell you what to expect in a measurement. For this, you also have to take into account how the experiment is set up, for example, what beam and what luminosity, and how the detector works and how sensitive it is. This together, theory, setup, detector, gives you an expectation for your measurement. What you are then looking for are deviations from that expectation. Such deviations would be evidence for something new. Here's the problem. These expectations are always probabilistic. They don't tell you exactly what you will see. They only tell you a distribution over possible outcomes. That's partly due to quantum indeterminism, but partly just classical uncertainty. Therefore, it's possible that you see a signal when there isn't one. As an example, suppose I randomly distribute 100 points on this square. If I divide the square into four pieces of equal size, I expect about 25 points in each square. And indeed, that turns out to be about correct for this random distribution. Here is another random distribution. Looks reasonable. Now let's do this a million times. No, actually, let's not do this. I let my computer do this a million times, and here's one of the outcomes. Wah! That doesn't look random. It looks like something's attracting the points to that one square. Maybe it's new physics. No, there's no new physics going on. Keep in mind, this distribution was randomly created. There's no signal here, it's all noise. It's just that every once in a while, noise happens to look like a signal. This is why particle physicists, like scientists in all other disciplines, give a confidence level to their observation that tells you how confident they are that the observation was not a statistical fluctuation. They do this by calculating the probability that the supposed signal could have been created purely by chance. If fluctuations create a signature like what you are looking for 1 in 20 times, then the confidence level is 95%. 
If fluctuations created 1 in 100 times, the confidence level is 99%, and so on. Loosely speaking, the higher the confidence level, the more remarkable the signal. But exactly at which confidence level do you declare discovery is convention. Since the mid-1990s, particle physicists have used for discovery a confidence level of 99.99994%. That's about a 1 in a million chance for the signal to have been a random fluctuation. It's also frequently referred to as 5 sigma, where sigma is one standard deviation. But of course, deviations from the expectation attract attention already below the discovery threshold. Here is a little more history. Quarks, for all we currently know, are elementary particles, meaning we haven't seen a substructure. But a lot of physicists have speculated that quarks might be made up of even smaller things. These smaller particles are often called prions. They were found in 1996. The New York Times reported, tiniest nuclear building block may not be the quark. The significance of the signal was about three sigma. That's about a one in a thousand chance for it to be coincidence and about the same as the current B meson anomaly. But the supposed quark substructure was a statistical fluctuation. The same year the Higgs was discovered again, this time at the Large Electron Positron Collider at CERN. It was an excess of Higgs-like events that made it to almost 4 sigma, which is a 1 in a 16,000 chance to be a random fluctuation. Guess what? That signal vanished too. Then, in 2003, supersymmetry was discovered again, this time in form of a supposed spottom quark, that's the hypothetical supersymmetric partner particle of the bottom quark. That signal too was at about 3 sigma, but then disappeared. And in 2015 we saw the diphoton anomaly that made it above 4 sigma and disappeared again. There have even been some 6 sigma signals that disappeared again, though these had no known interpretation in terms of new physics. For example, in 1998 the Tevatron at Fermilab measured some events they dubbed superjets at 6 sigma. They were never seen again. In 2004, Hera et Daisy saw pentaquarks that are particles made of five quarks with six sigma significance, but that signal also disappeared. And then there's the muon G-2 anomaly that recently increased from 3.7 to 4.2 sigma, but it hasn't crossed the discovery threshold. Of course, not all discoveries that disappeared in particle physics were due to fluctuations. For example, in 1984, the UA1 experiment at CERN saw 11 particle decays of a certain type when they expected only 3.5. The signature fit to that expected for the top quark. The physicists were quite optimistic they had found the top quark and this news too made it into the New York Times. Turned out though, they had misestimated the expected number of such events. Really, there was nothing out of the ordinary. The top quark wasn't actually discovered until 1995. A similar thing happened in 2011, when the CDF collaboration at Fermilab saw an excess of events at about 4 sigma. These were not fluctuations, but they required better understanding of the background. And then, of course, there are possible issues with the data analysis. For example, there are various tricks you can play to increase the supposed significance. This basically doesn't happen in collaboration papers, but you sometimes see individual researchers that use very creative methods of analysis. And then there may be systematic problems with the detection triggers or filters and so on. In summary, possible reasons why a discovery might disappear are a. fluctuations, b. miscalculations, c. analysis screw-ups, and d. systematics. The most frequent one, just by looking at the history, are fluctuations. And why are there so many fluctuations in particle physics? It's because they have a lot of data. And the more data you have, the more likely you are to find a fluctuation that looks like a signal. That, by the way, is why particle physicists introduced the 5 sigma standard in the first place because otherwise they'd constantly have discoveries that disappear. So 
What's with that BMAS on anomaly at the LHC that recently made headlines? It's actually been around since 2015, but recently a new analysis came out and so it was in the news again. It's currently lingering at 3.1 sigma. As we saw, signals of that strength go away all the time. But it's interesting that this one stuck around instead of going away. That makes me think it's either a systematic problem or indeed a real signal. Thank you for watching and special thanks to our tier 4 supporters on Patreon. Your help is greatly appreciated. And you too can help us to carry on with this channel. Go check out our Patreon page and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.